In just 40 years, the Margaret River wine region has established an international reputation. But there are fears up to a dozen applications for mining exploration leases nearby could spoil its clean green image. On top of that, there have been four exploration licences already granted, including one for an underground coal mining operation literally beneath some of the region's famous vineyards. That application is now being considered by the state's environment minister after his environmental watchdog found it was too risky to even consider. They're calling it one of the best vintages in the history of wine growing at Margaret River. But this year's harvest has been overshadowed by plans for an underground coal mine beneath some of its award-winning vineyards. I think the damage that coal mining does to the environment will be irreparable. And I don't think that in any way anyone's overstating. In fact, if anything, they're understating the damage that will be done. We believe there are social and economic issues associated with uh, anything that's uh, detrimental to the wine industry and the tourism industries in this, in this area. And we think that any economic benefit that may accrue to the area from the coal mine is trivial compared to the economic benefits of the wine industry and the tourism industry in this area. Why are we exporting coal, our carbon, to other countries uh, with a company that's 70% owned by an American crowd um, and all we as Australians are going to get out of it, we're going to get a ruined agricultural area. At Osmington, 15 kilometres northeast of Margaret River, the Hunter Valley coal miner LDO Operations wants to develop a $100 million underground coal mine with potential for up to a thousand jobs. The company says the vast coal mine would be a low impact operation with no stockpiling or washing on site. There's no coal going on the ground within the Margaret River region. Uh, we, we're trying to fit very much into the, the local region. There's some ephemeral streams on the, the property and we're going to revegetate the, the whole property and keeping it very, very low impact. You know, storage of equipment will be underground. Uh, as I said, conveyors will be completely sealed. Trucks will be completely covered. So it's a very low impact operation that we envisage. But critics say it would strike at the heart of Margaret River's clean green image, an image of unspoiled beaches, native forests and natural wonders that help attract more than a million visitors a year to the region. We've got wine and we've got great food, we've got fantastic uh, forests and uh, flora and fauna and the coastline's just fantastic as well. So there's all lots of things for people to do and see down here. We believe that having a coal mine in Margaret River will damage the brand because when you associate coal, you associate with dirty mining activity. And at the moment, we've got a pristine natural environment here in Margaret River. The Margaret River Chocolate Factory is a tourism drawcard, attracting more than 400,000 visitors a year. It now also includes a restaurant and fine foods provador business. But proprietor Patrick Coward says its ongoing success relies heavily on the region's image for natural beauty and sustainability. It's all about tourism here, wine tourism, beautiful gourmet food. There's a lot of new organic things coming along and we're getting busier and busier. Forty years ago there were no, vin no commercial vineyards in Margaret River. So we're, this whole Margaret River wine tourism area, which is now world famous, it's only been going for 40 years. Compare that to any other wine growing region in Australia, even the Swan Valley in Western Australia or overseas, we've only just begun here and the amount of success that we've achieved already in attracting tourists from all over the world, um, this is serious business. There's, there's nearly one and a half billion dollars invested in this region in tourism infrastructure including wine and winemaking and it's an export industry, it's a tourism industry, and it's only just begun. This is Margaret River WA, world famous for her surf and for producing some of the finest wines in the world. This is a television commercial which ran in prime time in Perth last month 
to draw attention to the fight against the mine. You can demand the government quarantines Margaret River from mining. So we have to make it clear that we will stand up and be counted and make anybody who wants to bring a hammer and pick to this extraordinary place rue the day because Australia is non-renewable. There is no planet B and we must stop this madness. High profile supporters such as comedian Ben Elton have also joined the fight and a recent art auction raised a $40,000 fighting fund. At $1,300. We are aware that um, a lot of the metropolitan people are not aware of what's going on down there and the potential it has. It's not a, a NIMBY thing. It's not a, a, you know, my backyard. It's our backyard. It's everybody's backyard. It's the playground for West Australians and people visiting. And it will be irreparably damaged. And given that this one mine could be the start of more than 20, and it's just underground coal. There could be, you know, it could be more things happening. Coal gasification uh, could happen down there, and it just cannot happen. We've got to preserve that region as as much as we can in perpetuity. Coal mining and wine tourism have coexisted for decades in the Hunter Valley by staying in clearly defined areas. We exist here and we're the, from the fourth biggest, most visited tourist destination in, uh, in Australia. Um, 2.8 million tourists come here every year and uh, they don't really see the coal mines. Uh, so you can coexist for sure. It's as long as they don't come and intrude into the vineyard area themselves. His vines are in perfect health now, but Andrew Margan lost a crop a couple of seasons ago when an underground mine caused subsidence. The damage repaired itself with rain, and the company paid compensation. His advice for Margaret River is to work with the miners, not against them. I mean, it's an exhausting process of, of fighting these people. It's an exhausting process for a community. It's an expensive process. It drags a lot of resources that are necessarily out of, out of places that... Um, it causes a lot of angst with people um, and, and no one wants to live with that and that's part of the issue as well as anything else apart from the reality the perception creates so many problems within communities and uh, and I think uh, people need to, to recognize that as being part of the whole problem is there a danger that the more controversy you whip up about this mm. the more airplay you give it mm. the greater the perception is growing that Margaret River is changed will never be the same uh, that is a danger, but I think it's a risk we have to take because this is a serious issue and we can't afford for the region to, to be interfered with by, by you know, something as, as appalling as coal mining, underground coal mining. Image and branding aside, opponents to the mine have grave fears about what impact it might have on the waters which flow into the Margaret River itself. The plan is to drill into a coal seam up to 240 metres below us here. But what sits on top of that is known as the Leadable Aquifer, and it is vital to the health of the river and the development around it. If you're going to be mining the coal measures, you're likely to have an impact on the aquifer. You're likely to drain the aquifer, and that will have to drain groundwater-dependent ecosystems, of which the Margaret River is the main one. Peter Lane is a geologist with 40 years' experience. He says the Margaret River's fragile headwaters in pools like this one depend on the Leadable Aquifer. He believes the coal mine could cause the river to dry up or be poisoned. It would discharge back into that aquifer and back into the river, back into farm bores, back into farm dams, so that doesn't get rid of the problem. And to discharge that water down the river, we've got 20 pools like this one down the river. We've got three weirs. We've got a long stretch of still water before it hits the ocean and where it is discharged is on our main surfing beach. So discharging contaminated water into the river is just not on. Vas Cole says it's been studying the hydrological relationship between the coal measures and the aquifer and that coal mines have been developed elsewhere without damaging water bodies. The main thing that I, we do need to understand is that we have never actually applied for a coal mine. You know, the, the issue here is that we have made application to the uh, EPA to carry out further studies. 
And uh, that is the, the process within WA that we have to ask for the EPA to set a level of assessment. So at no point have we said that we have all the answers yet. And we don't have all the answers, but we certainly have enough information that we believe justifies further investigation. WA's Environmental Protection Authority says further studies are futile. The environmental consequences of some low probability events may be so serious, widespread or irreversible that the proposal taken as a whole and on balance presents unacceptable risks to environmental values. The EPA says the risk to the Margaret River is too great. We believe at this stage that whilst that is a, uh, a low probability of occurring, if subsidence was to occur that affected the Margaret River, uh, then what would that mean for, for the public water drinking supply, for the act economic pursuits that rely on that water source? And we think those consequences are, are, you know, could be so significant that we would recommend against the proposal. The EPA will release its findings within a month and the company says it reserves the right to appeal. For wine growers such as David Atkinson, the uncertainty continues. His 20 hectare Shovelgate vineyard is across the road from the proposed mine shaft. We've added this property in 2008, it was worth 1.6 million. We've added it again in 2009, it was 1.2 million. And since the coal mine has been announced, um, Shane Greaves, who's our uh, valuer, reckons it's worth about 750 if we had a buyer. And we don't have any buyer, and of course we've also got a problem with borrowing, because we can't borrow on the property at the moment, because the banks won't lend us. Here we go. Look, here's a For the sake of future generations, such as his grandchildren Eloise and Isabel, David Atkinson wants the government to legislate to protect the Margaret River region from mining, as was done in the Swan Valley, where his Jane Brook wines are made. And that's what I've been pushing with Michael Wright from Voyager, to try and get the designated Margaret River wine region as non-mining, no mining at all, no coal mining particularly, because coal mining is quite dangerous to the environment and very dangerous for people's health as well. The West Australian Government is considering legislation to protect the region, but with the vast coal proposal still alive and a dozen exploration applications in play, there is a sense of urgency. Now, the challenge is that given the timing, uh, around the, 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 the live coal mining proposal and that longer term solution uh, that they may not marry up. I think we have to, we have to deal with this coal mining proposal uh, at, at the moment. In my view, uh, as the local Member of Parliament, is this is just a, a really dumb proposal uh, that has enormous negative ramifications for uh, one of, not only one of the most beautiful areas of the state but from a tourism perspective, uh, but also from an agricultural and in particular viticultural uh, point of view. If this domino falls, there are others that could follow and, and turn that uh, tourism and agricultural uh, mecca uh, into a coal mining province. And no one, uh, no one wants that to happen.